This is IEP TV News, broadcast from Davis Hall. We will bring you our weekly news bulletin. I'm Jake Taylor. And I'm Emma McCarthy. Today we bring you stories related to IUP in the Indiana community. We will begin with local news. In order to celebrate February as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, Alice Paul House partnered with the Indiana area senior high school students to continue raising awareness with the help of students and teachers on healthy dating behaviors. With help from a United Way grant, the nonprofit Victim Services Agency developed a poster contest called Love is Respect. The organization also held Respect Week, PSA daily announcements. The project aims to create awareness on how to identify unhealthy and abusive patterns in an effort to start a conversation and offer support to victims of dating abuse. 20 hours after announcing his run for presidency, Bernie Sanders raised $6 million for his campaign. There was a total of 225,000 donators which helped outperform his previous run in 2016. His contributors also pledged 600,000 reoccurring monthly donations. This gives him an enormous lead over all other Democratic candidates by 35 percent, making Sanders the clear frontrunner for the upcoming election. Less than a week after his announcement, he lost at least three key staff. Thanks to Elon Musk and his space business, NASA will send a mannequin into space on March 2nd. This will be the second time Musk's space business will launch a mannequin into the orbit. The purpose of this action is to perform a trial run for the new Crew Dragon spaceship, which will carry upwards of 5,000 pounds of cargo to its intended space station. The Dragon will then be unloaded by a crew in a separate spacecraft before it will crash back down into the Atlantic Ocean. This will be the first time a commercially built and operated American rocket and spacecraft built for humans will launch into space. The 91st Academy Awards on Sunday was full of surprises. Mahershala Ali won Best Supporting Actor for the second time in the last three years for his work in Green Book. Actress Regina King won for her supporting role in If Beale Street Could Talk. Other winners include Lady Gaga for Best Original Song, Shallow. Spike Lee won Best Adapted Screenplay for his film, Black Klansman. As predicted, Rami Malik won Best Actor playing the role of Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. And British actress Olivia Colman took home her Best Actress Award for her role in The Favorite. For four consecutive years, IUP successfully secured funding to bring teachers from all over the world. This time, 18 teachers came since January. Jackie Gillis has her story. So this is a map of my country. It's a small one. The size is almost similar like the uh, Pennsylvania. And this is uh, the largest human uh, flag. We are actually a lot of people in our country, 160 million. So we made this largest uh, flag. And this is our um, language movement monument. We uh, offer our respect to the marchers. We shed their blood in 1952 to respect, uh, actually to establish Bangla as the official language. For four consecutive years, IUP hosted more than a dozen teachers from around the world. The teachers were recipients of the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Programs for International Teachers. This year, 18 teachers represent seven countries. Among them are from Botswana, Morocco, Indonesia, and Senegal. They were selected based on their accomplishments and teachings, as well as their commitment to their students. Um, it was a pretty rigorous process. They have to show excellence at their schools. They have to be teacher leaders. So besides all the teaching duties, they have to show that they are willing to raise up the status of the students. Um, many of their communities are impoverished, and so they've really led the way to um, form some excellence in the students themselves. This past Thursday, the teachers participated in an event that brings the professors and administrators to come and share their experiences. Among others are the provost, Dr. Timothy Moreland and President Driscoll. Welcome to IUP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now that we're five-ish weeks into the semester, I won't say I hope your semester starts well, but I hope it's going well and you're having a good time. Um, I know that our faculty members are excited to have you here, looking forward to collaborations that are going on, as well as our partners outside the university and school districts and so on, really working together to learn from each other. And if there's one <laughs> message for all of us here, it is this is a time when you learn from each other, 
we learn from you, and hopefully you learn a little bit from us and your experiences here, and we take back that learning after you leave us to change how we do things, how you do things, to make them better for our students. And that's, that's what we're all about, of course, is better experience for our students at the end of the day. While they were here at IEP, the teachers had a chance to learn the best practices in teaching. Uh, from this program, I, I got a lot of stuff from, uh, for my uh, colleagues there, for my friends, teacher friends there in Indonesia, and for my students, especially for my students. Having been in Indiana for a few months since early January, the teachers hoped that they can apply what they have learned in their home country. Obviously, the uh, main thing, my main focus is education system. So the uh, teaching strategies, uh, especially the student-centered uh, learning system. The International Education Office has seen that such adaptation is very strong, along with a good relationship and understanding among the teachers. This program has been one of IUP's accomplishments to support development of education around the world as well as an opportunity for a cultural exchange among secondary teachers all over the world. This is Jackie Gillis reporting for IUP TV News. And now we are reporting a story close to home. In order to support retention and to help students find their study path, IUP introduced University College. Johnny Levan has his story. For the last five years, IP has developed the campus with a few things that they hope can improve education and attract new or transfer students to choose to come here. My major is communications media. I am a musical theater major. My major is criminology. My major is communications media production, and the main reason I chose IUP is because um, when I came here, I really thought that the whole department was really personal with who we are. And it's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I know I'm on a first name basis with pretty much everyone, and they all know my name, and that's that's really important in like an educational environment. Based on the students' input and experiences, currently IEP is beginning to develop a new department called University College in order to help students find their career path. The goal for the college is to really help increase graduation um, of our current students to help the student engagement retention from freshman to sophomore year. So um, with bringing the University College on this campus, um, we're hoping to kind of integrate all the services that we have available to students that help them give a strong academic start. And it will give them a way to explore the things they want to do space. Instead of finding out their junior or senior that they didn't like this major because of the uh, internship they had to do because of the uh, work they had to do. I'm in the environmental engineering program. I came to IUP in 2013 as a music major, and uh, I did that for a year. I hated it. I left for two years. I came back for international business. Hated that too, and uh, now I'm in engineering, and I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I, I like a lot. The University College is supposed to be available to students next semester, providing them with what they'll call an exploratory major. As it turns out, IEP's retention rate in fall 2015 was 74.5%, and that has dropped to 70.45% this year, which is just 3.75% from the national rate. When thinking about the university, uh, the first thing you usually think about is the library. So with our goal of increasing retention and academic success, uh, this puts the students in a great location where resources are already here with the Academic Success Center, the Major and Career Exploration Center, uh, and then our office uh, being right where they're going to come for study. So I think it's a great addition and a great location. So right now we have undecided majors on campus and they might be in different colleges, so business or fine arts. Um, but what we are doing is instead of having undecided majors this semester and next year, we'll have exploratory students. So these are students that are coming in looking to find that major that fits with their likes. And so this allows them to kind of grow into places while they take different courses on campus and look at what the different colleges have to offer. Since we're about to grow with exploratory majors, we would like to help them be comfortable on IEP on this campus since they will be here for the next four years. So we want them to be able to find these places. We want them to be able to ask for help. We want them to be able to feel welcome. So that's what our main goal is. I really believe that connections are a very important part to their success. 
So again, I'd like to develop a connection with as many students as I can and help them feel comfortable because I do believe that flows into their success on campus. We want students to be successful not just in their academics but also professionally and personally. We want them to feel like they're connected here at the university um, but also in the community. Um, we want them to feel like they're part of a family, not just another student or another member. Come next semester, we will see all of this department's hard work help the students to find their careers and success at IUP. This is Johnny LeVan with IUP TV News. So Mike, big weekend for IUP basketball. That's right, the men's game came down to the wire, it was a close one. Women's game was a little disappointing, but there's still hope in the postseason, so stay tuned and find out the details. Hey, 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 hi, hey. Matt Chips here with something special just for you. Press start. Press Star is the most prestigious, hilarious, and entertaining TV show ever seen on air. You want to watch? Here's what you do. Grab a TV, grab a remote, and turn it to... And there you have it. Delicious gaming and nerdy content right there in front of you. Bring the wife. Bring the kids, bring your friends, bring your dog, your dad, your mom. Sit them all down and watch Press Start. I don't mind Press Start, but I really prefer what a Yeah, I guess it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Press Start's pretty cool. The number two ranked Crimson Hawks men's basketball team held off the California University of Pennsylvania Balkans on the road last Saturday. The Hawks came out on top 65 to 60 coming down to the final minutes after Cal U outscored IUP in the second half. The Hawks sit second in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference with an overall record of 24 and 2 and 17 and 2 in the division. Although the Hawks three point percentage may not have been where they wanted it to be, they still outperformed the Balkans in every other category including field goal percentage, free throws and rebounds. The point guard Dante Lombardi finished with an impressive stat line of 20 points, 12 of them being from the three-point range, three steals and four assists. After the loss the women's basketball team suffered last Saturday, the Hawks fell to number eight in the Division II Top 25 coaches poll that was released Tuesday afternoon. They fell five spots from number three heading into the final week of the schedule with an overall record of 22 and two. The Hawks are currently tied with Grand Valley State for the eighth spot in the rankings. The NHL trade deadline is hit once again and the deals made around the league proved to be much more exciting than the last. One of the biggest names was Matt Duchesne, who now finds himself playing for the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets gave up forwards Vitaly Abramov, Jonathan Davidson and a conditional first round pick to the Senators. Philadelphia Flyers own power forward Wayne Simmons was acquired by the Nashville Predators for Ryan Hartman and a conditional 2020 fourth round pick. With this transaction, the Preds add another big body to their team that will pay off in the postseason after an extensive regular season. Well, thank you, Mike. I mean, good luck to IEP basketball. That's right. Hey, uh, it'll be a good one. Women's team will look for a postseason run. Mm -hmm. NHL trade deadline. We'll see if those teams uh, amount something in the postseason, too, as well. Yeah, I'll see you next week, Mike. Hey, same time next week. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Too Much Soul, where the only rule is to be fly. We have our four contestants here. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mark. It's your girl, Dana. Kamaya! Alright, and the name of the game we'll be playing is Name Your Favorite Culture Show. Beautiful design. Is there a show that has stuff to you? Double the trouble, sister, sister. Double the trouble. Do we have some twin action on the board? 
Oh, okay, okay. All right, now, no pressure here, Maya, but, you know, you got the category of 4,000. <laughs> Can you name a show that has inspired you? My show? My show is Hawk Talk. Oh, that's a good pick right there. Do we have Hawk Talk on the board for 4,000? And there it is, Hawk Talk, Aaron, 9.30, Fridays, Eastern Time, where you got the best topics, the most realest opinions, and tons of laughter, y'all. Come join the family. If you have no plans this weekend, we can suggest that you come for the Acorn Project, a collaborative show among music and theater students. With the help from faculties and alumni, Joseph Kearney has his story. Waller Hall is alive with students, faculty, and alumni preparing for the ACORN Project. The ACORN Project is about students developing new work. Students write the plays, uh, they direct them, they perform in them, and we take the plays through the process of an initial reading for the playwright to hear it, uh, then a somewhat more um, elaborate reading where we have actors in front of an audience so that the uh, playwright can gauge an initial audience reaction. You could expect all student work. Um, we have a play reading before labels. We have two plays that are being read Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all written by students. Um, labels itself is a student written play. So directed by another student um, and then performed by students. Labels is about how people label each other. So you should expect high emotions and very relatable characters and a very like dramatic story that'll have you laughing, it'll have you crying, and by the end I think you will definitely have a relation with a, at least one of the characters that you can take away. I sort of do whatever the stage manager tells me to. Um, I keep track of the time for rehearsals, um, sort of corral the actors and make sure they're where they're supposed to be. Um, we're doing a lot of set design because we don't have any designers, uh, so that kind of falls onto me. Um, and yeah, just kind of like the person that people talk to when they need something from the stage manager. This is a true example of what the students, alumni, and faculty can do when working side by side. The ACORN Project will be shown in Waller Hall from February 27th to March 2nd at 7.30. For IEP TV News, I'm JJ Kearney. The ACORN Project will be shown this weekend and next at Waller Hall. If you're more interested in the painting exhibition, the University Museum shows Hard Hat and Women exhibition until March 9th or music by The Sweet Remains this Friday at Goral Hall. Please stay tuned. We'll see you next week. And also, be sure to check out IUP TV News on social media. We have Facebook and Instagram. It's IUP TV underscore news.